Hey guys and gals, welcome to K6 Outdoors. My name's Kyle. Today we're gonna be, you know, planting some apple trees here in the backyard. We're gonna be digging out the sod, digging a hole, putting the rooted tree in the ground, packing the soil around it, filling it with some mulch, watering it. If we're lucky, it's gonna do well and well, provide us some fruit in the next few years. Hope you guys will stick around. These are the stamen apple. These are a rooted plant we picked up at Costco. They were a four foot uh, tree, uh, rooted tree. So again, you get their you know, they're nice sized trees. I think they're like 17 bucks. So it's gonna kind of hard to beat that. Yeah, you know, they're not super large. So it's gonna take a few years to get them up to speed. But we're gonna plant two of them. We're gonna put one here and one right down there where that yellow pole's at. The biggest trick with this stuff is these are, you know, these require pollination. So you don't want them too far apart. So you don't get cross pollination for fruits. We're gonna go ahead and get these trees planted. And uh, I'll kind of guys show you guys the process of how I plant trees. Not necessarily apple trees. I've only planted a few fruit trees in my day but I have done a few other trees. So we're gonna get moving here. I've already kind of made a straight line across my property line here from pole to pole, measured over. And, um, you know, so I can look down the, when I'm mowing the trees and not have the anxiety that they're, they're not in a straight line. So now when you're sizing the hole for your tree, generally speaking, you want it to be about twice the size of the root ball. Um, and as deep as the root ball, but no deeper than that because you don't want to bury from where it was propagated at. A couple of reasons for that. It lets the roots develop, spread out easier because it's not trying to go through hard soil and it all allows you to get moisture down there a lot better too. So what I'll do, I'll use a stake of some sort. I have these driveway markers handy, so I'm using it. I made a little string for it to give me a, so I can get a nice perfect circle. Not that it really matters that much, but this makes it look a little nicer. And then I'll, you know, Make my hole. So that's the size of area I'm going to excavate out of soil or out of uh, grass. Obviously, I'm going to dig a hole inside of it that's, you know, probably only about, you know, somewhere in that area, about two times the size of that root ball. I mean, it's probably a little bit more, but I'm using a bigger shovel. And why I do that is it gives me an easier diameter to mow around, and I'll mulch that all in there with fresh mulch and get rid of the grass. So now that we've got that marked, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the, so the top sod here. Not that it's growing well anyways, and we're going to dig that hole in the middle. It looks like about a foot deep, because uh, that's about what the root ball is on this tree. All right, because I'm you know, super specific on how this should be, I want to make this as I'm sure it's in the center. 24 inches is the center of our circle. It is a 48 inch diameter. Okay, just gonna make sure it doesn't gotta be perfect. I just, I visually like it, okay? I do like to bring this out here because the level is kind of handy to have for many reasons, but I like it because it gives you an idea of where ground level is at because you want that graft to be above ground level. So right now, you know, we're about nine and a half inches up from the bottom of the hole. Let's go ahead and bring this tree over here. Get rid of the plastic on it. Go ahead and open up the bag. What you'll see is this root ball is about 10 inches. So it's gonna bring me up right about to a ground level. Go ahead and open this bag up. Take off the bag. All right. Now you want this graft section right here to be above ground. And again, that's why I mentioned this earlier, you want this to be there so that's why the level is kind of handy because it gives you bearings to where you're going to be at um you know in regards to your finished finished level here so that looks good we know that's the center of our hole we're above this section here we're going to go ahead and fill this dirt back in around it and you're going to tamp it not really hard but you want to keep the tree stable again the reason why you want this to be 
dug bigger. You want the roots to have plenty of space to grow. You don't want them to have to struggle to spread out, grass themselves, you know, and, uh, and grow. So again, just kind of breaking the soil up as we set it down in there. Just kind of tamp it with your hand. You don't want to, you know, pack it, pack it, but you want it to be packed enough to where the tree can stand on its own and develop a root system. Just breaking up our dirt here. Packing it in as we go. See how it's nice and sturdy there? It's exactly what you want. We'll go ahead and take that out of there. Just because we know where center is at now. But we're gonna go ahead, pack that in. Around it. Making sure you leave that graft above the ground level. And when we bring mulch into this, we'll you know, keep it back from the base of the tree. Again, just you know, not super packed tight, but you want to keep the tree. Again, you can see we've got some stability there. That's exactly what we want because we're not going to stake this tree. I've had better luck not staking them. It makes a more stable tree and it encourages more root development like we discussed just a few minutes ago. All right. Perfect. Some might just say, good enough. We're going to go ahead and put some water on it, then we'll pack the mulch around it. We're going to go ahead and water this nice and slowly. I'm going to put about a gallon of water on it. And then we're going to put the mulch on top of it. some recycled you know, recycled trees around it to help hold the moisture in, protect the roots in the extreme cold, you know, and you know, make it easier to, to mow around. Keep the weeds down, all that fun stuff. Again, we're gonna make sure we keep it back from that bottom of the tree. And the very last thing I like to use are these tree guards. These protect the barks against damage from mowers, trimmers, rabbits, antler rub, deers, sun scalding, 85,000 things. They're really not that expensive and it's a uh, added security. It does, does all that stuff I just told you about, but it also keeps the bark on the, the mulch back away from the tree a little bit. When you're doing this, pretty well, be careful not to damage the tree. Again, they are a little sensitive to losing their bark. That's what you, you know, you don't want to destroy the tree by putting this on for the exact thing you're trying to prevent. So just slip it on there like that, and you are all ready to go. Like I said, it'll help you keep that stuff back away from that graft as well. And you're all done with your tree installation. Looks good. Let me know what you guys think of this. This is my personal favorite way of planting trees. I've had good success with this. I don't have to worry about weeds, trimming around the tree, anything damaging the tree. You know, the moisture stays in the ground longer with the mulch protects it, adds nutrients and you know, overall just looks better. Again, I don't stake mine. I found that this helps the roots develop better. And by tamping that ground as you go, it, uh, you know, 
It helps give stability to the tree and give it a place to develop roots. Thanks for stopping in. My name's Kyle, and I, uh, you know, I'll catch you guys on the next yard project. I gotta get this one finished up first. Take care. We'll see you guys later.